Okay, let's talk about some other things. This is uh, this is the price of oil. Now, this is not nearly as well. It's, you're going to be surprised at how important it is to you. But this is way more important to groups I'm going to talk to tomorrow in the oil package. Okay. Um, this is the price of what Louisiana sweet from 1975 all the way through our forecast period. And our forecasts are based on the price of oil. And by the way, when you get your uh, CD, there is a whole section in there where I tell a little story about why the price of oil fell. Why did it fall the way it did? Why did it fall so fast? There's a reason for that. There's one country that's a reason for that. Matter of fact, I told you folks last year, one of the reasons this is so difficult to forecast is because there are some countries that can just do something. And immediately, you get a big price change. And that's exactly what happened in this particular case. And so our forecasts are that the price of oil, which is going to average 55 this year. You know how you average 55 this year? You start out real high in the game. Right? And then you become way down. You average 50. We think next year it will also average about 55. And that next year, the year after that, about 17. Again, we have a whole story. Now that is our point forecast around a modest range of 30 to 90 dollars a barrel. <laughs> Why do we have such a big range around this sucker? Because it's the second most difficult thing to kind of be forecast. This is really I, when I talk MBAs, executive MBAs at LSU, second most difficult thing to kind of be forecast. If I came to you people and said. I can forecast the price of oil 30 years from now, plus or minus $2 a barrel. You would kick me out of here. It's, it's, it's insane. Nobody can do that. And this is the second most difficult thing to come before. Me. The most difficult thing to come before me <laughs> is the weather. We can forecast the weather 30 years out, plus or minus 2 degrees. Okay, that's the second. Yeah. This is one of, the one of the reasons why you've had such good growth in this area, and that is this big decline in the price of natural gas. You know, you had one, two, three, four, five, six years worth of price of natural gas was very high. It's really bad for your area because the chemical industry and it is a very large user of natural gas, and now the price of natural gas is falling. We think it's going to stay down. Now, we do think there's going to be a little bit of growth in the price of natural gas, uh, this is probably one of our more heroic uh, forecasts. And, and the primary reason for that is the increase in the demand that's going to come from all these plants that are being built and also uh, a power companies switching from coal to natural gas. So there's a little bit of increase in demand. There's still an ocean of natural gas out there, so we don't think there's going to be any big upward jump in the price of natural gas. And as a result, we've had this amazing, this amazing industrial boom in Louisiana. As I mentioned to you last year, it was a really good year in the past. I've been watching Louisiana economy for about 40 years. A really good year in the past. We had $5 billion in expansion. We thought, hey, this is terrific. In, in Lake Charles, we had $300 million. We said, that's terrific. We now have $145.4 billion in the state. And it's very heavily concentrated by industry. About $50 billion of that's in chemical. And about almost $60 billion now is in LNG export terminals. I'm not sure I changed this. I didn't change that number. That number is now 70 billion because of the Romer thing that was just announced here the other day. It's highly concentrated geographically from Baton Rouge to New Orleans. It's about 44.5 billion. And then, boom, over here, we got $96.6 billion. In a good year in the past, if you had 500 million, 300 million, we thought that was terrific. And here you got 96.6 billion. Now, here's an interesting question, and that is how much of that's real? Okay? <laughs> And here's what you'll discover. If you look statewide, about 62.5 billion has already gone vertical. It's either finished or it's in the process of being built. It's like the Chenier facility is being built. Now, I'll notice, compared to 5 billion, that is a monstrous number. As it turns out, there's about 83.1 billion that is at the feed stage, front end engineering design or permitting stage. Okay? And that 83.1 one billion is something we have to be a little bit nervous about. Now, what you'll also notice is this. When it comes to Lake Charles, you have about 40 billion underway and about 57 billion, by the way, that again should be 96, I already changed that, and about 57 billion is at the feed stage. And this stuff is at the feed stage. There's, there are threats out there that I'm going to show you in just a minute to these actually going vertical and becoming real. 
Now, what's odd about this, look at yours. It's about half, almost half and half. When I was uh, in Baton Rouge today, in Baton Rouge, they have a much smaller number here, eight. But all, almost all, of, all the projects in Baton Rouge have gone vertical. They have only a tiny amount that hasn't. At the other end of the spectrum, if you look at the New Orleans metropolitan area, where they have about 24 billion, very little of theirs has gone vertical. They got a whole bunch that is out there that hasn't gone up yet. It's just announced. Most of that, by the way, up in St. James Parish, which is about halfway between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. Now, what about these threats? I'm going to mention a couple of them right away. And one of them is this one right here. Why are we having this huge increase? The drop in the price of natural gas was not enough to create what you're experiencing. The primary thing to create what you're experiencing is the fact that the price of natural gas in the United States is here. The price in Europe is here. The price in Asia is here. This huge gap between the price of natural gas here in Europe and Asia means that if you take this big pie that represents the world demand for chemicals, what is happening is that pie is not growing very much. That's not what's causing your big growth. What's causing your big growth is we're kicking the behinds of the Europeans and the Asians because they can't compete with us. Their price is too high. Okay? That very poor input natural gas is what they just can't compete with us. However, if you look closely at this chart, look at the tables. Look what's happening over here. This big competitive advantage that we had before has now narrowed. Now, it hasn't gone away. We still have a competitive advantage on it, but it's narrowed very significantly. Why has it narrowed very significantly? And the answer is, where do these people get their natural gas? They get it from Russia, or they get it from the Middle East, and those countries price their natural gas off the price of oil. So if the price of oil is $100 a barrel, they take about 15% of that, and $100 a barrel, they're going to charge $15 per million BTU. I mean, we're kicking the rear. The price of oil has dropped down to day 47. And so that wonderful competitive advantage we have is still there, but it is narrowed a good bit. And so what has happened as a result of that is some of the projects in your area, actually all comes to mind, have taken the foot off the accelerator and they tapped on the brake just a little bit. Just a little bit. They whoa, whoa, whoa. What if Goldman Sachs is correct? Do you agree with Goldman Sachs then? Goldman Sachs, and here's an important phrase, could go, price of oil could go to 20. Could is the opposite word there. Okay, it could go to, well, the price would go to 20. If it goes below 27, the competitive advantage is totally gone. Okay, that's basically what happened. We're a long ways from that. And I really don't think the price is going to go to 20 or 27. But one can make arguments for that, but I don't think it's going to happen from a probability standpoint. 